I am Laura Dixon, and you are listening to the Naturally Thin for Life podcast, episode number 244, When Logic Fails. Welcome to the Naturally Thin for Life podcast. Get ready to learn how to live in your dream body, free from all the diet rules. You're going to learn the naturally thin mindset and strategies so that you never need to count, track, or measure your food ever again. And instead, you get to live the rest of your life at your body's optimal weight with the peace and freedom you've been craving. Let's dive in. Hello, friends. Welcome to this week's podcast episode. We are going to talk about what to do and how to approach your eating decisions when logic seemingly fails. And I know this happens for many of you, and it was something that I really struggled with and really kind of beat myself up over was this idea that I kind of couldn't outsmart myself, where I was trying to use my intellect so strongly to change my weight, meaning I would research, I would count calories, I would track what I was eating, I would read all of these books, I would study all of these people. And I knew so much information, like so, so much information. I even went through a whole certification program so that I could just better understand nutrition and better understand our bodies simply for myself before I ever even started a business. And it was just out of my own personal desire for more information and more knowledge about this area that I struggled with so deeply in my life, that being obviously my weight and my relationship with food and my body. I know a lot of you can probably relate to that struggle where you have acquired so much knowledge and so much information, yet you sometimes find it difficult to put that information into good use to serve you. And you may sometimes find yourself making choices that contradict what you know to be true or what you know to be best for your body. And this can often lead to a lot of frustration, feeling annoyed with yourself, being irritated with yourself. And then over time, this can lead to feeling really down and discouraged and defeated when it comes to you and your goal in relation to your body and food. And I used to just tell myself all of the time, I know better than this. I know better than to eat this food that is not going to feel good in my body when I am done. I know that this isn't really what I want for myself, meaning to eat a bunch of snacks in the evening. I would know full well that I'm going to feel gross after I eat this third serving of ice cream, or I would know that I was going to regret that food decision later. I knew intellectually way more than what I was able to get myself to do behaviorally. And so that disconnect for so many of us is one of the most frustrating parts of losing weight. And so that's really what I want to talk about in today's episode. And first, I want to just normalize that that is a very common occurrence that many people have. Many, 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 many people. I think probably 99% of the women that I've ever coached inside of the Naturally Thin for Life membership have mentioned some version of this at some point where we know intellectually what to do or what we want to do, yet we are struggling to follow through with that. And a lot of times I think this happens because we overemphasize intellectual knowledge over other skills sometimes. And then a lot of us, because we are very intellectual beings, and I think that is an important part of us being human, is that we have this great intellect. And a lot of us really love to use our intellect. And then we have jobs or careers or hobbies or passions that we have that allow us to utilize this vast intellect that we have. And it also is just fun to learn information. It is fun to learn about topics that you are interested in. And so when we have this great ability, then sometimes when you think about a scale with the two sides of the scale, like a a traditional kind of scale with the two sides that balance, a lot of times we overemphasize that intellect and we underemphasize the other skill that is required to allow us to make a behavioral change. And so what I want you to take away from this podcast episode is that nothing has gone wrong. All of that information, all of that knowledge, all of that intellect is extraordinary, but we just need to balance it out with another skill. 
And this other skill is really the skill of being able to allow and change the emotions in your body. And I'm going to talk about why that is so important. And first of all, it is important to really understand why you overeat. And I'm going to simplify why you overeat because it is actually this simple. And if you notice, as I am explaining this, if you notice yourself wanting to think, well, that's not me, I want to encourage you to see how this does happen for you, how it potentially shows up for you, and what really truly causes you to overeat before you attempt to disregard the simplicity that I'm going to share here as to the reason why you overeat, because it really is simpler than you may think. So we all have the desire to eat right before we put food into our mouth, right? The food doesn't just jump into our mouth on its own. (laughs) And so we all have the desire to eat and we want this desire to eat. This desire to eat is good. We want to get to an optimal hunger level and then we want that desire to eat and we can feel that desire to eat. It almost feels a little bit like a pull towards the food, like a kind of magnetic attraction towards the food. And it's really important. And it's something we want. It's something that helps us stay alive. Because when we get to our optimal hunger level, we want that desire to be there. But what causes us to overeat is an over desire, an over desire for food, wanting to eat food when we're not hungry, wanting to eat food that doesn't feel good in our body and wanting to keep eating past our optimal satisfaction level. That over desire causes overeating compared to simply eating in a way that's in accordance with your body. So just think we want desire, we all have the desire to overeat. And the only thing that causes us to overeat is over desire. So what creates that over desire? That over desire is always created by an underlying emotion. And it's most often an emotion and and an attempt to distract yourself from some other emotion that is existing. And so sometimes we may think that the food will help us relax or that food will help us, you know, decompress. But really that desire to relax, that desire to decompress is a search and an escape from something else. So imagine you are really stressed and or overwhelmed, right? Those are two emotions, stressed or overwhelmed. You're really stressed or overwhelmed thinking about everything you need to get done at work and at home. And then you may find yourself desiring food to escape from that stress, to escape from that overwhelm. And sometimes we say to ourselves, oh, I just want, you know, the food to relax. I just want the food to decompress. But again, it's really that kind of running away from trying to distract ourselves from that stress and or that overwhelm. Or maybe you are bored and you're experiencing the emotion of boredom. Maybe you're sitting there on a Sunday afternoon and you were so excited to have a day to yourself and your husband is out with the kids and you've gotten everything done you wanted to get done and you weren't sure what to do with yourself. And so you find yourself feeling bored. And then you find yourself walking to the pantry looking for food when you're not actually hungry. Again, That over desire for the food in that situation is really driven by the underlying emotion of boredom, wanting to distract yourself from that boredom. Or maybe you are feeling really excited. Maybe you have a new job interview and you've just been waiting to get this either promotion where you are or you've been waiting to work at this other company and you're so excited about the company and their mission and what you're going to be doing there. And it's in a couple of hours and you're just so excited you can hardly contain yourself. Maybe mixed in with that is a little bit of nervousness. And you find yourself snacking on more nuts than maybe you wanted to. And you find yourself just kind of thinking and eating nuts and or eating crackers way past your optimal satisfaction level. Again, in that instance, you had an over desire for food. And what you were doing is really using food. And that over desire was a distraction from the underlying emotion of excitement and or nervousness. Or maybe your kids are all at home and it's summertime and they're really, really loud (laughs) and you're sitting down to eat and it just feels a little chaotic. You're experiencing an emotion of chaos in your body. 
and you're sitting there eating with them and you get up and get a second serving of dinner, even though you weren't really that hungry. But the reason you acted on that over desire in that instance was really because you were trying to escape from and distract yourself from the underlying emotion of chaos. And so whether or not it's very blatant that you are creating over desire in your body that leads you to overeating because of stress at work, or if it's not maybe as blatant, if maybe you are telling yourself you just want to relax or decompress, not realizing that that desire to relax and decompress is really trying to escape a different emotion. Or maybe you tell yourself you just want to extend the pleasure of eating rather than getting the kids ready for bed or rather than going back to work or rather than sitting back at your desk and checking email. Even in that moment, when you simply want to extend the pleasure of overeating, that is over desire for food. In that instance, your over desire for food, you have perceived that experience as being more pleasurable, as being greater than what is next. So I want to give you an extreme example here to illustrate my point. Imagine you're sitting there eating and you're thinking about those emails that you just, you know, you have to answer after lunch. And instead of ending your lunch when you're satisfied, you decide to go and get some peanut M&Ms and eat them, even though you're not really hungry, but just really to extend that pleasure for a little bit of time. And I want you to contrast that to this somewhat extreme example. Imagine maybe you are sitting and having lunch at home. And maybe you're working from home. And so you're anticipating again, having to go back into your office and answer the emails that you don't really want to answer. And so you decide to extend your eating with food that you know isn't going to leave you feeling super great. But in that moment, instead of going and getting seconds to eat, or instead of going to the pantry where there's chocolate and nuts that you want to snack on and continue to extend that pleasure, Imagine your child has been away for a year. Maybe they've been studying abroad for a year and they're supposed to be home in another month or two. And the doorbell rings and you get up before you've gone and you went to go get that extra food. You're just satisfied in your body. Before you went to go eat those nuts or peanut M&Ms, you hear that doorbell ring and you go to the doorbell and there is your daughter. And you haven't seen her for over a year and oh my gosh, and she's back a month early and you are just like ecstatic and tears start welling in your eyes and you just are so delighted to see her. And you give her just the biggest hug and you just start talking right away about everything that she has has done and all of the adventures she has gone on. In that moment, you are not thinking about the peanut M&Ms in the cabinet. You're just so glad and enamored with your daughter who's in front of you sharing these experiences that she just had. So when you compare and contrast those two examples, I do that to illustrate the point in that that over desire in your body is because you are dreading or you have a negative anticipation about what is next when you are satisfied. So in the first example, when you needed to go back into your office and answer some emails, right, you might have dread or you might have a negative anticipation about that. There's some sort of negative emotion that you are using over desire to distract yourself from versus when your daughter appears at the door, you don't need over a desire to distract you from anything because you're just in love with the fact that she's there. And so what I want you to ask yourself is when you notice that over desire to eat, ask yourself, okay, what am I trying to distract myself from? And you might notice that you want to prolong eating. And again, you just want to ask yourself, what do I want to distract myself from? What is going on for me that I want to keep eating when I am already satisfied or when I want to eat when I am not hungry? And if you want more information, because like we started at the beginning of this podcast episode, we all have information. I'm going to give you a little bit here about where to find it. If you go back to episode 149, emotion versus feeling, I describe in that podcast episode how emotions work physiologically in our body. 
And sometimes that's helpful to understand because the skill here that I'm going to talk about is how to change your emotional state, how to allow emotions in your body so that your intellect can be what you follow through on rather than that over desire, rather than that desire to escape from stress or overwhelm or boredom or dread or whatever it is that's causing that over desire in the first place. So because sometimes logic and intellect can triumph, it does work sometimes, but not always. You want to have both skills. You want to use your logic. You want to use your intellect to change your behavior. But you also want the other skill, which is being able to let an emotion be in your body without reacting to it without letting that emotion kind of take over, without letting that emotion control your behavior. And how we do that is by making peace with that emotion in our body, by allowing that emotion and stopping it, kind of putting a pause button on it. If you think about that emotion, which drives our habits, that emotion that's going to drive your habit of overeating when you allow it and you make peace with it and you don't fight with it and try to run away from it and you simply kind of think about making space for it in your body to be there, it can be like a high vibrating buzzy emotion that just kind of calms down. And then you start to feel more in control with your intellect instead of feeling like your intellect is kind of in a constant negotiation with you and you're in a constant battle with yourself, almost like a child that you just cannot get to do what you want to do. I used to feel that way all of the time. Like, I I know what I want to do. Why can't I get myself to do it? So it's kind of like when you are experiencing some anger at work, let's say. Maybe something happened with your coworker, you have some thoughts, you have a feeling of anger. But you know intellectually that in order to say what you want to say, have the situation run more smoothly, act in accordance with how you want to act and know that your communication will be much better and more effective if you let that anger calm down rather than yelling at the person when you're feeling angry. When you know that you want that anger to calm down and then you want to make a decision, It's the same with our over-desire for food. We want to calm that over-desire down, and then we want to make a decision. Just like we want to talk to our coworker out of respect, and we want to maybe be honest, and we want to have a calm conversation with them, knowing it's going to go better that way. It's the same with our over-desire for food. We want to calm it down, and then we want to connect to ourselves, to our naturally thin selves, and then act and behave in accordance with that. And so how you do this step by step, I have in episode 86, How to Feel, and episode 138, Break Any Eating Habit. So if you want a much more kind of detailed explanation of how to calm that over desire in your body down in the moment, real time, go back to those two episodes, we will link them to the show notes. But I want to again talk about it here so that you don't necessarily have to go back to those episodes. You can just hear what I'm sharing here and you can just start implementing this from a more high level approach and just notice what changes and how quickly you can reduce that over desire for food. And again, the importance of this is because you have a body and your body weight is the same as your desire for food. And so if you have a body that is overweight, over what you want it to be, not even necessarily overweight by some BMI chart, but overweight when you compare it to your ideal weight, what you know would feel most energizing and light and strong and all the ways you want to feel. When your body is over your ideal weight, that means you have over desire. And when you have this skill, of calming down your over desire so that it stops creating automatic overeating. When you do that, then what happens is you actually reduce your over desire. So imagine like a thermometer kind of chart where, you know, it's kind of gone up to whatever your body weight is. And that's your desire and your body weight. They're at the same number. Let's say they're at 195 pounds and you want them to be 145 pounds. Then you need to reduce your over desire down to 
a amount that matches a body weight of 145 pounds. And when you do that, then you have a desire for food that is matching and that is equal to your ideal body weight. And when you do that with this one skill alone, you will have the freedom and the peace because you won't need to battle any over desire anymore. So anytime you feel that over desire to eat, you can apply the skill of allowing an emotion to either the over desire itself or the underlying emotion that you are trying to escape from, whether that be stress or overwhelm or boredom or excitement or nervousness, any of the examples I gave you or any experience that you maybe have. For me, a lot of times it was anxiety. I was experiencing anxiety. And because I was experiencing anxiety and I didn't know how to allow that emotion and kind of release its grip and its hold on me, that fueled over desire for food. And then I would eat in a way that was just not in accordance with what I knew. It was not in accordance with my intellect. And it was a skill of allowing that over desire, allowing that anxiety, being able to calm both of those emotions down that allowed my over desire to back down, back down off that like thermometer chart and get to my ideal body weight. And so that my desire for food match my ideal body weight. And that is what I want for all of you as well. So when you are experiencing over desire and or any other underlying emotion, here's what you're going to do. You're going to recognize that you are feeling an emotion. And I find it very helpful to name the emotion. You can Google emotion words or you can get an emotion wheel, whatever it is. It doesn't really matter. The point is not to get the exact emotion right, but to recognize and to take a minute to accept and understand that you have an emotion in your body. You might notice that you have that over desire to eat. Then maybe start there and ask yourself why. And then you might ask yourself, okay, if I'm experiencing over desire to eat, I know I'm not hungry. Why am I wanting to eat right now? What am I trying to distract myself from? And if I was trying to distract myself from something, what emotion is that that I'm trying to distract myself from? And then maybe you name that emotion. And whenever emotion you want to kind of make peace with that you want to calm down, maybe it's that over desire itself, or maybe it's stress from work, then you name it and you might say, okay, I'm feeling over desire or I'm feeling stress. And then you remind yourself, once you've named that emotion and you've taken a minute to recognize it, you remind yourself that you are creating that emotion with an associated thought in your brain. And therefore, because you are creating that thought, then you can release yourself from its seemingly strong hold. And it's a seemingly strong hold because it doesn't actually have a hold over you. You can be the one that creates and calms down that emotion so that you feel like you're in control. You feel like you're in charge instead of that very strong desire to distract yourself from the stress, let's say. And then you can describe that feeling in your body as objectively as possible. And the reason you do this, the reason you want to describe it as objectively as possible is because it turns on another part of your brain that allows you to sort of watch your body have an experience and kind of create some separation between you watching your body have an experience and your body actually having the experience. And in neuroscience, I often hear them call this metacognition, right, where it's like we can watch ourselves think. It's similar to when we are maybe having a conversation with someone and we're talking to them, but we're like kind of thinking about something else or we're thinking about something, we're in deep contemplation and it's like we're watching ourselves think about something. And so we all have this ability to do. And when you describe that emotion objectively in your body, that feeling, and you tell yourself, okay, I feel like I have a tight string across my chest. I feel like a rubber band is very taut in my body. I feel a very high vibration happening. It feels like that emotion is red in my body. I feel my heart is beating a little bit faster. I feel the palms of my hands are a little bit more moist than they were before. Or maybe I feel a swirling sensation in my chest area that resembles a little bit of a dust storm or whatever it is. That actually maybe isn't the best because you want to describe it as objectively as possible. So you might say a swirling sensation in my stomach that kind of feels a little bit like a tunnel, let's say. 
And the reason you want to describe what you're feeling as objectively as possible, and you can either do this out loud or on paper or just in your own head, is because it allows that metacognition. It allows you from a distance to kind of watch yourself have an experience. And it puts the pause button on that emotion from leading to an automated habitual response. And then as you are doing that, you want to notice what happens to that feeling in your body. More often than not, you will experience a sense of decompression. You will experience a sense of calm. You will experience a sense of control. It doesn't necessarily mean that feeling goes away, but you feel more in control. You feel more in charge. You stop feeling like that over desire, that kind of that that rope that sometimes feels like it just like lifts you off the couch and takes you over to the pantry to eat some food. It stops feeling like that is part of your experience and you really feel in charge and you really feel in control. And just ask yourself, what is happening as I'm noticing this emotion in my body? What do you notice as it becomes less intense? And then as you notice it start to dissipate, as you notice it start to kind of lose its hold, then you want to use that moment to think about your naturally thin self, yourself at your ideal weight with the exact relationship with food and your body that you want. You going to bed tonight feeling really energized and light and airy and lean and just feeling so cleaned out in your body. You want to go to that version of you and think, okay, what do I want to do here now in this moment? It is in that way that you combine your skills of using your logic and using your intellect with the skill of allowing an emotion to create permanent, lasting, habitual changes. And then when you start taking action, when you start behaving in a way that is different than your habit, you start to create new neural connections in your brain. You start to become a different version of yourself who no longer even wants to overeat. The version of you who has reduced that over desire to instead match your desire for food with your ideal body weight. So there's no more over desire for food, but simply you have the desire for food that is equal to your ideal body. All right, my friends, I hope you take the time to implement what I shared with you here today and to just be curious and be open minded and see what changes when you practice this. And if you have enjoyed this podcast episode and if you are enjoying this podcast, I ask you a favor if you would take a minute to write and leave a review wherever you listen to the podcast. So whether that's on Apple or Spotify or YouTube or anywhere else, When you take a minute to write and leave a review, that simply helps wherever you listen to the podcast know to suggest the podcast to other people like you. Because more than anything, I want other women and any woman who really wants to change her relationship with food in her body to know that it is possible and to know that there is a way to lose weight, to feel great, and to make permanent changes that create peace and freedom rather than feeling like we have to live by and follow strict diet rules forever to live at our ideal weights because it simply isn't necessary and it's not how we are intended and designed to live. So thank you in advance for taking a minute to write and leave a review wherever you listen to the podcast. I hope you all have an amazing week and I will talk to you all next time. Hey friend, if you're enjoying the podcast, I invite you to come and check out the Naturally Thin for Life membership at naturallythinforlife.com forward slash join, where you'll learn the full Naturally Thin method broken down into simple and doable steps so that you lose the weight you want peacefully and rapidly and keep it off with ease for the rest of your life. The Naturally Thin for Life membership provides you with the tools to not only lose the weight you want, but customize your mindset and your habits to your unique body and life. As part of the membership, you also get an implementation workbook to ensure your inevitable success. Head over to naturallythinforlife.com forward slash join to get an inside look and tour of the Naturally Thin for Life membership. Hear from countless women who've utilized the tools and the extraordinary successes they've been able to achieve. I hope you join us over there at naturallythinforlife.com forward slash join.